Okay, uh, what I would like to talk to you today about is, uh, as Ron indicated, this is a project that was started actually before NGA and has uh, went through a, a period of quiescence while we were waiting for NGA products and then has and been developed and it benefited greatly from uh, the NGA project. And what it is uh, called is the, uh, we call it the Design Ground Motion Library, the DGML. It's a product uh, that was for a study sponsored by the California Geologic Survey Strong Motion Program and PEER and uh, is, uh, was developed originally for them and now is going to be, uh, t uh, I think, taken over by PEER and implemented for general access. So the question is, what is uh, DGML? Uh, I won't go through the long history of what it was in the beginning, uh, what the concept was, but now what it is is an interactive software tool for selecting acceleration time histories for engineering applications. Basically, it's a, it's a replacement for all of geotechnical engineers. So it basically provides a, uh, a, a, a process for uh, anyone who accesses it to select time histories from the peer engineering peer NGA database or ultimately the peer database of all types of relation or ground motions and the selection would be based on a design response spectra and uh, a set of other criteria that the user may wish to use magnitude distance silo faulting VS30 records with or without pulses so basically the original concept of DGML was a static library where we would recommend a list of records for certain conditions it is now involved to an interactive tool where the user can specify a wide range of, uh, uh, specify their own conditions, what they want to look for, and then it will select an, a reasonable set of records for the engineer to consider for his application. And the tool also provides a, a linear scaling process to scale the records to match a target spectrum on average. It does not do uh, spectral matching. It does not do any uh, code checks to whether, whether you're meeting various code criteria that we leave all up to the user it's just a tool to develop a basic starting set of records for the for the engineer to consider and as I indicated the primary basis for selection of records is response spectral shape it basically looks for uh, acceleration records in the database that have a similar spectral shape to your design spectrum so the user first specifies a, uh, that's not going to show up very well, specifies a design spectrum. And I'll go through how the user does that. There's a variety of ways to do that. The, the DGML software then scans the database and selects records that meet criteria specified by the user, such as what magnitude range they want to look at, what distance range, VS30, so forth. And then it compares the records in the acceptance criteria range compares their response spectra with the target spectra and calculates the mean difference and mean squared error difference between those two spectrum and then ranks the records by the mean squared error and basically tells you which records have the response spectra that are closest to what the, your design spectrum. The mean squared error is calculated very simply. We uh, operate in log space and basically we calculate the difference at a particular spectral period, the difference between the, the, log, uh, the log of the ratio of the spectra at the period to the target spectra at that period, or basically the difference in the log amplitudes. The, that value, the difference between the two is then summed over the period range of interest to the engineer, you, which you specify what period range you're looking at, and we calculate an average difference between the response spectra for the time history and your target spectrum, that average difference is basically becomes the linear scaling factor that would scale that record to be on average close to the target spectrum. And the mean squared error is just the, the, the uh, difference between the, the scaled record and the target spectrums, the sum of the square differences over the period range of interest. We also have, a, of course, a, we allow a weighting factor that, as I will get into, you can put in very complicated weighting functions if you want to look for scaling in different period ranges with different uh, weighting functions, which I will show in a minute. 
So that's basically the simple process we use to calculate closeness of fit between the target spectrum and a spectrum of a particular accelerogram or pair of accelerograms. So the basic software package right now is implemented in MATLAB and uh, then the plan, as I will indicate again at the end, is the plan is, uh, Peer is now in the process of converting that to a web-based tool for general uh, accept accept accessibility. So the first step is to specify your target spectrum, and we provide three options. One is uh, building code. Basically, uh, in, you enter the uh, site-adjusted spectral ordinates at 0.2 in one second and the long period transition period. Uh, the tool is also can implements the NGA models so that you could specify uh, in one, from one to five NGA models and the parameters, the input to that model, it would construct a spectrum from the NGA relationships for you. Or you can specify your own own spectrum. Just enter it as a text file and it will read it in and, and uh, construct the spectrum. This is a, a screenshot of the, of the tool in operation for a code specified spectrum where you enter the, uh, S, S, the uh, short period, long period amplitudes and the transition period and it constructs a spectrum for you. And if, you know, this is in log log, which uh, people that work in ground motions like to use, but the, uh, it has the capability of switching the plots to linear, linear, uh, log linear, or linear log, if anyone actually wants to look at linear log. So it has a graphic interface tool that allows you to uh, to plot in different ways to look at the response spectrum, and then you can also save the constructed uh, response spectrum as uh, a uh, fi ASCII file output at 100 periods. So we'll do a linear interpolation to get a 100 period output. Uh, as I said, you could specify the uh, input target spectrum in an ASCII file. For example, if you wanted to use a uniform hazard spectrum, you would just digitize it, put it into an ASCII file, and read it into the program. And the other aspect is to run, uh, is to use NGA uh, relationships. So NGA models, the current as published in 2008, are built into this software. You specify the various parameters, magnitude, distance, style of faulting, dip, uh, depth to width of rupture, depth uh, to the top of rupture, VS30, number of standard deviations, which of the five relationships you want to use, all of them, only some of them, and they, they will construct a uh, the spectrum for the individuals and compute the geometric mean of the, of the result or the arithmetic mean at your choice. We've also built into this tool the uh, capability of constructing a conditional mean spectrum, uh, which is uh, becoming more of, in, of interest for developing the design a spectra for a spectra for analysis of particular buildings or in particular period ranges. Uh, the concept of the conditional mean spectrum is that if you have a target uh, period of one second and a target uh, spectral amplitude, which say is two standard deviations above the mean at that particular period, what would you expect the response spectra of an actual earthquake to be. If, if you were at two standard deviations at one second and you had a record that actually was at two standard deviations at one second, you would not expect that same earthquake to have a response spectrum that it was two standard devi deviations at all other periods. And there is a, a work done by uh, Al, uh, Alan Cornell and Jack Baker at Stanford who have gone into development of this concept of a conditional mean spectrum and the DGML implements the model, uh, uh, the correlation model uh, developed by Baker and his co-author that is published in the NGA volume to construct, construct a conditional mean spectrum if that is what you wish to do. So you would just specify uh, a conditional mean spectrum and request and then you input the epsilon value and the period and it will ca calculate a conditional mean spectrum from the NGA relationships. So that is uh, the three ways that at this point, present time, you can construct your target spectrum. The next step is to search for records. The searching for records, the user 
then specifies uh, what magnitude range he wants to consider, what distance range he wants to consider, what styles of faulting, what VS30, whether he wants to have records with or without pulses in them, pulses being defined by uh, having a, a recognizable uh, coherent uh, uh, response in, in the velocity range. Uh, you want to specify the period range you want for comparison between your target and the and the individual spectrum, or you also can specify whether you want to look for just individual components or whether you want to look for both uh, two components locked together so you can calculate the average difference between your target and the geometric mean of two components. Uh, it you cr currently uses the NGA database, in which has all been rotated into fault normal, fault parallel direction. And you can also also specify in this the limited range of scaling factors. Some uh, engineers and scientists think that they should not use records that they have to scale more than a factor of two or three to reach the target. So you can specify a limit on the scaling range. You can also use uh, significant duration ranges as a possible limiting value. So you can specify any or all of these as criteria for possible that your record must satisfy. Then, uh, then you specify the, the period range of interest for matching between your spectra and the target, and then a weighting function that should be evaluated across that period range. And I've shown a somewhat complicated weighting function just to illustrate what the tool can do. Typically, you might just specify, I'm only interested in, say, 0.1 to one second, and I want to give equal weight to that whole period range, and you would just have a boxcar weighting function but you can have uh, more complicated weighting functions. The tool allow you even to have disjoint weighting functions. I want to look at high frequency and low frequency and nothing in the middle. Uh, I'm not sure who would do that, but one of our reviewers wanted to have a tool like that, so we put it in. <laughs> and then you specify how many records you want to look for. So for instance, in this ex typical example, you might be in a process where you're using a developing a set of records say, for nonlinear analysis and you want to use have s pick seven records, but you want to look at more than just seven. So you specify the total number to you to look for and then how many you want to use to compute an average of the, of the ones that you've selected. And then you press, it goes, then, goes into the database, searches through a, uh, a table of the response spectra that's been computed for all the time histories in the NGA database and then finds the rec all the records from the metadata data that fit within the criteria that you specified up here, and then plots all their response vector, all those light blue lines of the response vector for 30 sets, and then it shows you the average of the seven best records, the best being the, having the lowest uh, mean standard error. And that information is now printed in the table down below. So that's the first step of your selection process. And then now you can go through and look at the record, the spectra for each one of the records that have been selected. So you basically highlight one of the records selected, it plots the time history of the records, and it plots the response spectra of the records as scaled up by the scale factor, which is listed over in one of the columns on the left. So you can in examine individually the response spectra for the two components. Uh, you can look at uh, one component at a time by the selection. You can plot velocity and displacement to look at what the velocity and displacement of those records looks like as a part of the selection process. Uh, you can also look at vertical components. Uh, we have, although the peer, the NGA models and the primary database is pr was focused on on the horizontal components. We also implemented into this all the verticals that were available and linked that into the same database so that, because uh, I know many applications, you also need to look at what the vertical component will be or include the vertical component. So you, although it doesn't do any uh, scaling or checking the vertical component, at least shows you what the verticals look like. Uh, then you can go through the process and say, well, I didn't like, I, like, I saw this seven, but I'm not really 
some of those I don't like. I want to see what else is available. So you just scroll down on your list and, and look at other records as you go, and then you can add and subtract records out of the selected seven set, selected set to get your final set of what you think are the best seven records to use for your application. This is just an example where we've now gone back down, picked seven records, and then just plotted this response vector for the seven records. You can save the, the figures that are generated from this to, to files that could be pasted into reports. Uh, and we also have implemented an alternative search process where you can, instead of looking for particular magnitude and distance ranges, you can say, I know which records I want to look at. If you know their NGA numbers, you can enter their NGA numbers. Or you can just say Northridge, and it will list, show you all the spectra from Northridge that are, exist in the database. And then the final step is the final step in the use of, of the tool itself is to save your results, and it gives you two reports. Uh, one report it gives is the, the results of the search, which are the, and, and lists out the metadata from the NGA uh, flat file uh, information on the records that you've selected in terms of, of their magnitudes, distances, site conditions, uh, whether or not they have identified pulses in them, the scale factor to reach to match to reach them to scale them up to match the target spectrum. And then you can also save the unscaled records as ASCII files to your directory. So basically, then you get out the directory, and at that point, then the engineering engineering analysis begins. I, the, I would say the rec the engineer should then go back through and recompute the spectrum from the records as they come out, and do all the, the checks you need to do to satisfy yourself that the records meet your criteria. So uh, this tool is primarily just a, a way to get an initial starting set for application. Uh, as I said, the current version of this product, which we delivered to the sponsors, was written in MATLAB. Uh, and But due to uh, distribution issues, it's, it cannot be sort of blanketly distributed on a DVD. Basically, the database itself can't be distributed that way. So Peer is in the process of converting this to a web-based tool such that it will be linked to the Peer, ultimately to the Peer uh, living database of strong motion records such that it will not be just restricted to purely NGA-related uh, ground motion models. And Joseph has indicated that the planned release of that is uh, early next year. And then also the plan would be to periodically update that the database that it links to as as peer continues to add ground motion records to their database then this tool will now search through larger and larger data sets of records and finally uh, let's acknowledge the sponsors this, this project was uh, uh, sponsored by the California Geologic Survey and uh, by the peer lifelines program and they were very forgiving in the long time it took us to roll this thing out and uh, the primary team was from uh, Geometrix Consultants. Uh, and the primary uh, software architect is Dr. Gang Wang, who's since left and now is a professor in University of Hong Kong. And then we had a long, a large list of very distinguished uh, individuals that act as reviewers of the process, the overall direction, the growth, and how the tool was working. And these are, these are listed here. And we thank all of them for their support.